I appreciate a good old honest pocket dump, you know, on the table. Just lay it all out there. ES Daily has great stuff. Like he has really good taste and stuff. Thank you for submitting your feet and all this other gear that's in the way, obscuring those. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> What's up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to Carry the Way, the weekly podcast where we nerd out about all things EDC and maybe try to teach you a thing or two while we're at it. I'm Bernard, the founder of EverydayCarry.com, and I'm joined by our editor, Mikey. What's up? All right. So in this episode, today, we'll be going back to our roots a little bit and featuring content from our community. So in case you didn't know, EverydayCarry.com was built over 10 years ago as a place for people to share their EBCs and get feedback or recommendations from me when I was running that blog and a bit of deep host lore here. Mikey was one of my first followers, and we met when he asked me about some Victorinox stuff. So uh, just like good old times, we'll be reviewing some community EDC photos, some pocket dumps, and those were ones that got the most likes and engagement on our various social media platforms. Then we'll be answering a couple more listener questions like we usually do and reacting to some recent comments on our social media posts. Um, but before we jump into that, it's been a while. Let's do a pocket check. Okay. Since we're taking it back old school, I've been carrying old school stuff lately. Um, these are stuff that I collected back in like the 2013s, 2014s. So flashlight, flashlight check. This is the Sunway Man V10 RTI Plus. Oh, man. It's a, I forgot about one this. of the early, one of rotary? the very early titanium rotaries, if yeah. not the first titanium rotary. And kind of put rotaries on the map pretty much. So... I am flashing it at the screen right now and just showing mm -hmm. the magnetic. It's all titanium. It's pretty slick. I sold it. Remember our old episode about seller's remorse? I sold my old version, and I, f I found somebody selling a decent copy uh, a few years oh, ago. Kept, okay. um, picked it back up, never letting it go again. And for the knife, uh, this is the second Spyderco I've ever owned. This is the Spyderco Dragonfly 2 Sal Glesser Classic. Yeah, that's this classic. is in a discontinued ZDP 189 um, and British Racing Green FRN handle. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Um, this is an early appearance of the steel. They don't make the steel anymore. It's known for being pretty hard. It's very tough steel. So when I kind of messed up the blade a few years ago, it, it took me a while to wait for people who were able to repair it because they kind of mm -hmm. like ruined the edge. It was so hard that most standard like sharpening systems couldn't touch it. So I had to wait a few years until... Somebody came along and could fix it for me. So yeah, old school carry, Sunway Man nice. V10R, and Dragonfly 2. You read my mind. I was going to ask, like, what makes ZDP 189 special? Um, so mm. it just seems pretty hard. All right. I had another question about the Sunway Man. Um, I'm mm, sure, sure, like, many of our listeners don't remember that brand. What happened to them? They kept making these rotary ones. They, they ended up with a couple of, like, mini ones, and then they just disappeared. I, I don't know what they happened. They just disappeared. They, 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 I guess they faced a bit of competition at the time from, I believe, Jetbeam and Nightcore was starting up back then. Yeah, they were doing rotaries too. Jetbeam, I remember especially. I don't know. They kind of just fell off the map. They, I think they, they were also acquired a few years down the line, but then they never produced anything like this anymore. So these are kind of like collector's items at this point. So yeah, never letting this one go for sure. Nice. Nice. All right. My turn. Most of my carry is kind of the same. I'm actually getting some stuff in the mail, but this thing that I got, this is the Kaiser Veritas. And I got this because Mikey saw it and was like, <laughs> hey, this looks like Bernard would like this. And then he asked Kaiser to send me one. And I was like, uh, what is this? I didn't ask for this. Now I'm responsible <laughs> for this. And I opened it and like, oh my God, like <laughs> just, it is super up my alley, dude. I, I'm gonna like, I wanna make a TikTok about this, just a video, but I might have to do like, a proper long form. So the Kaiser Veritas is a Jacob Lundquist design, and I've liked his just design language since the Kaiser Feist, which was this like slim, uh, kind of organic looking front thumb flipper. And uh, this is a titanium frame lock, but it just has so many good details that you cannot see from a product page. And I could go into all of them, but that might take up too much time. But I do think this is probably my favorite Kaiser that I've handled. And there's just so many cool details. And I think, I don't know, it's just hard to find a knife where if you look really closely, then you see the value of it. Because a lot of knife designs, or at least I think 
with the, the way Instagram works and like YouTube or whatever. It's just whatever you see initially, whatever the most obvious quality of that knife is, is that's what it will be pigeonholed into. But so much of this is like either intangible or not really perceptible unless you take a closer look. And that is the kind of design that really like, you know, really resonates, resonates with you. Yeah. Yeah. So good choice. Good choice. Bernard knife. Yeah, you, you did good. <laughs> You did good, thank you. <laughs> you know, now that you held it up to the camera, it kind of reminds me of the Chaparral, which is your favorite Spyderco knife, isn't it? It's yeah, I, I got... can see that. Um, it has some ang it has some angularity to it, and um, mm. it has like uh, interesting patterning on the handle here. Mm. Uh, that's yeah. also geometric. I'm just holding it up now, but like you can <laughs> see, like even this uh, the pill like the pill shaped thumb hole, it's like perfectly uh, oh that is framed sick. by this by it's yeah it's perfectly framed by the recess right um but mm. then the lock bar on the back also i'm trying to do the influencer thing <laughs> where you hold the thing up on the lock bar um it also has uh this angularity to it that perfectly frames oh, it sick. and it's and the edges of it are chamfered i, I suppose oh so yeah really the smooth. finishing on this is insane the centering oh. of the blade is perfect um it is just I like how like, the... so well done I like how the tang of the front flipper at the end also lines up completely with the edge of the handle. That's really yes. sick also. And uh, the here, this this part by the pivot, like the top of the knife, it has some symmetry, but then also it the way it's uh, shaped kind of guides your thumb for the direction <laughs> you should be doing the front flipper. So it's just very satisfying. Sick. Everything kind of makes sense from like, it's like really good. You utility and design coming together and working together and informing each other which to me i like i know i'm nerding out right now so i think we should be moving on just like five minutes why almost why is it kaiser like promoting more about this knife this is a really sick knife i, would, like, I don't know they, this knife almost went uh under my radar yes. completely under the radar yeah yeah for me, i just saw it uh, and it was like this kind of looks like something Bernard would like, and like full titanium, really top tier steel, really sleek design. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that's what we're carrying. How about we look at uh, some EDCs that are infinitely better than ours, and we mm. just because uh, they don't. <laughs> and not just us. like, <laughs> yeah. not just like some old school stuff you can't get anywhere. Yeah. So let's take let's a look at these. All right. Let's start with our most liked Instagram post. This one is going to be. Uh, from Kali, an electrical engineer in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Do you know where that is, Mikey? I have no idea. Well, as an American, <laughs> neither do I. I had to look it up. It's like a country <laughs> in the Balkans in southeast, uh, south southeastern Europe. Um, but this is their always be ready EDC, and we got kind of a lot going on here. Um, if we that's, just that's the motto. That's the motto of Five Eleven, isn't it? Yeah, he has a he has a five eleven bag here, and yeah, that's if, a just to describe this, this is a pretty maximal setup in a uh, five eleven LV six. So that's like their mm. low vis kind of smaller bag. Slings. It's a little bit more discreet, um, but he has uh, a couple of slip pouch organizers, um, like a bunch of tech. Got some Leatherman raptors paired with a surge multi-tool here uh just i think pretty much everything this is a very full carry to me this this reminds me of the old school oh this is kind of like on topic this reminds me of the early edcs where it's a bunch of tech guys carrying really technical stuff because on the left side mm -hmm. of his carry it's a bunch of like powered um there's there's airpods there's power banks there's flash drives but True. then the rest of his stuff is like super rugged technical stuff. You got a nice, um, you got the paracord bracelet. You have a technical watch. You have the technical flashlights. And it's just like this old school balance of how EDC used to be. And 511 in itself is like a yeah. heritage EDC brand also in the technical space. Right. So this is giving some old school ready for everything kind of vibes. This, uh, I will say, is probably not the most Instagram friendly, but uh just in terms of like just like how it's shot but i i appreciate a good old honest pocket dump you know on the table just lay it all out there and, uh, and people it seemed to resonate well people liked it it was our most liked uh photo in the past and month. people really like 
seeing these like super massive dumps also because it's just so much stuff going on and it's so yeah. interesting and there's always something interesting to point out like he has those Kershaw little one piece multi tools that he has the Victorinox nail clippers which are my favorite also so it's always nice to see like a big variety in a big dump like this so there's always like something to see and something interesting to catch on to. Yeah, speaking of big dump, I appreciate that they have some wet wipes here and uh, some mm. <laughs> tissues with this little pony on it. I think that's really cute. Um, what do you think about having like these uh, three flashlights? Three flashlights in the slip pouch. What do you think about that? Well, they're different sizes. So I think one one for specific tasks. There's the smaller light for the up-close inspection stuff. He's got a sm uh, larger version of it. And he's also got the Warrior Mini 2, which is a bit more... Larger, larger output, and you know redundancies. Why not? There are. He's got lots three of different flash drives. <laughs> the more I look at this, the more I see redundancies. Uh, there's mm. like a zippo lighter and a big lighter. There's mm. yeah, multiple like flash storage sort of things. Uh, two types of multi tools. Two types of multi tools. It's got two two wallets. He's got two wallets. <laughs> He's got True. two wallets. That's yeah. sick. Um. Oh, that's for tobacco. Well. Mm. All right, don't demonetize us. Uh, so that <laughs> one's a good one. Thank you for submitting, Kali. Um, so let's move on to another one. Uh, this one is Spoopy Things um, for an October carry from Mike, who does security in California. So we're looking at mm. this. This is an all-black carry, and there is uh, some little visual flourish here with a orange jack-o'-lantern kind of design on a leather wallet. It's custom mm -hmm. made so that's cool nice to see some customization some personalization there and then we got some classics i would say um very much so and notably very well used classics these are not yeah, these like pristine are tools and i love it i love it it's it's cool yeah. it's cool you can see uh leatherman surge um full-size multi-tool cloud defensive it's one like of my favorite top, top tier yeah flashlight super top tier um, flashlight. especially in the tactical space if you're into that uh, kind of top tier right now. Then um, beat up Garmin Tactics Delta Solar. So this is like a, uh, s not a smartwatch, kind of. It's like GPS. Yeah, it's one of those GPS. Kind of watch. Yeah. And then S tier knife, Spider Co. Pair Military 2, <laughs> all blacked out. Uh, mm -hmm. The clip is kind of getting worn out a little bit, but um, this is a good, you know, like solid cover your bases carry. I also like the beat up chucks in the background. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that slide. Kind of goes uh, with the yeah, theme. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to comment on our community's <laughs> feet too much. Uh, that might not be within the scope of you know what we're trying to do. Um, but thank you for submitting your feet and all this other gear that's in the way obscuring those. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Um, so th those were the the top most liked on Instagram, and uh, we can move on to Reddit. So Reddit is another place. Uh, we have a subreddit r slash everyday carry and you can submit there um this one was highly upvoted i would say <laughs> yeah that's uh, almost upvoted this month yeah so this is what we're looking at here is kind of a, a very leather based pocket dump the title is i'm my biggest customer lol and I noticed that this is a, a, maybe a little bit self promo, but I gotta I, respect it. Yeah, I'll allow it. Like as the, the man literally I'll made, allow it. Yeah, he made the man literally stuff. made his entire EDC out of his own, like you know, as a creator yourself, as a maker yourself. You sure. gotta respect that, right? Yeah, I re yeah, it would be cool. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Um, what do we got? It looks like uh, we got a minimalist leather wallet. This is an interesting kind of design where it has a it's like top loading with a flap that inserts into the slit here to keep it closed. And then mm -hmm. I'm assuming that this, uh, this other leather good here is a field notes journal cover. Mm, I, I should agree. make a rule where people have to say what they're, they're <laughs> using. Um, but I didn't do that. It's kind of just for the vibes. And then we have a CRKT yeah. minimalist. Uh, I'm assuming this is a Foltz minimalist, right? Yeah, the, Foltz um, cleaver, fixed, yep. yeah, the cleaver fixed blade into a little leather sheath. And then even mm -hmm. an Apple Watch leather strap. That's kind of nice. And uh, Apple Air, Air Tag, tag holder. holder. Yeah. That's what I'm assuming that is. So kind of a mix of like tech, uh, minimalist tech with the, uh, you know. Splash like of green out, with the know. green Hank also in the background. True. There, yeah, there's a green Hank. Hanks, I think, are, are underrated handkerchiefs. 
Um, it's got a nice mm-hmm. topographic kind of design to it. I'm not sure if they made that themselves, but um, yeah. Rich leather, forest green, olive green. You know, it's kind of a nice combo. Looks pretty good. I can see why this is up upvoted 95. Gotta respect the yeah. guy who can make his own stuff. Thank you, PoxZ, for submitting this to our subreddit. And let's take a... No- oh, this one is... Uh, <laughs> This speaking one. of feet <laughs> yeah speaking of feet who i by the way i did not pick these mikey curated these uh he says it's, it's data driven he it's says data it's data driven, driven. i have i'm no working idea. out of pure data here yeah uh, but yeah this one is from es underscore daily and the title oh, is classics this... never go out of style and es daily has great stuff like he has really good taste and stuff and yeah. he, he posts a lot of these themed stuff so it's black and leather and kind of like tactical for this one, I, I suppose. Yeah. So, so got what are we looking at here? We're looking at uh, this POV. You got uh, <laughs> you got your raw denim on, you're cuffed, you're, you're showing your selfage on the other side. Um, mm. I don't know what these boots Classic are. Classic red wing red mocks. Wings? Yeah. <laughs> so we got some red wing boots and your raw denim, your raw selfage denim. So this is already mm. like, you know, kind of in that tough workwear mode then mm. what do we got going on with it so there's i'm super zoomed can, in now there's this uh, a vintage IDB. seiko turtle i think 6309 mm. um it's got the wow. logo, logo <laughs> on it yeah this is not nice. the new prospects turtle uh so yeah. this is just like really sick uh kind of vintage dive man knows his stuff seiko. yeah uh very nice japanese design i believe under it is Trayvax. a dango oh Trayvax. No, that's Trayvax. Trayvax. sorry yeah. Yeah, um, this is a Travex wallet. Um, so that's like kind of a, a hard metal chassis wallet, minimalist wallet, but sort of up armored around it with leather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it kind of, we're kind of seeing a theme here this like leather goods and denim. Then we, mm. we get into this, uh, there's like a short machined pen here. I'm thinking this is Keras Customs. It looks like Harris Customs to me. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, that, that's another that kind of an older metal knock. brand. Yeah. Yeah. Older brand in the the EDC space. I don't know if we see these metal knocks, uh, these metal mm-hmm. knock mechanisms used as much anymore. I don't know. Yeah. I think only Parker cons- constantly still makes them like en masse. But in the machine mm-hmm. space, it's it's all bolts and buttons yeah, now. Yeah. I think people are moving to bolts and buttons. I, I feel like these knock mechanisms over the time are not as reliable i could i source i made it up i don't know where i heard (laughs) i love i love nox though nox are my favorite over anything else so these these are like clickies but they're a little bit i don't know how if you can be a little bit silent but they are does that make sense Mm. i've never i've never owned a Keras custom have you you ever had them so I'm. Th- this is a discontinued tactile turn one. Um, I I used to have mm. Kara's uh, customs. I actually did a review on Tumblr like ten years ago on the Kara's customs, <laughs> something like that. And then so moving on, we got. Uh, I'm assuming this is a Hank. Uh, Hank's you know, always good. Of course, a real classic. Another guy salvage. Right here. Another salvage yeah. Hank. Yeah, real real classy guy here. We got the Streamlight Wedge. Um, Woo, love the wedge. And then so here. Streamlight Wedge, if you guys can't see this or don't know what it is, it's kind of like a slim, uh, it's almost like shaped like a pocket knife instead of a cylinder, it's, but it's a flashlight. It's shaped like the like, knife right beside it. Exactly. <laughs> like the uh, Microtech, uh, it's Microtech, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Microtech, uh, yeah, Ultratech at the front knife. And, and a well so used one. Yeah. You can see the finish is wiped off, yeah. Disclaimer, real quick, this is not legal in many places, so uh, yeah. not could not you know recommending everyone gets one of these but i personally appreciate the kind of design synergy here between the otf and the streamlight wedge man knows what he's doing for sure then you got the classic ray ban so um i agree these classics are never going to go out of style thank you es daily for sharing this check out the rest of his stuff he's got like really well put together curated edcs if you want to get more inspiration man knows his stuff for sure I'm gonna after this we record this. I'm gonna look up like vintage turtles, watch. vintage Seiko turtles. Stop! Yeah. Stop! Just yeah, stop! Okay. okay, let's move on to this next one. So this is from our uh, private Facebook group, the EverydayCarry.com mm-hmm. inner circle. So Jeff Harbison sent this one in, um, 
it's actually like a fuller uh like a bigger post let's let me show the entire post real quick mm. so um their top contributor and they say thanks for the accept love to see all the edc carries after 20 plus bags this one does it for me and it is kitted out <laughs> There is stuff on stuff, in stuff, above stuff, near stuff, connected to stuff. Yeah, so this is, I don't know, how big is this? This does not look that big. This is kind of like a a sling bag. Um, who makes this? Oh, That's, Hazard 4. Um, hazard 4. Yeah, yeah Hazard 4. Um, so uh, how, how would you <laughs> describe this? It's kind of like a small-ish tactical sling but it's extremely modular and customized. Mm. It's got like pouches and loops attached everywhere and every slot has some kind of gear attached to it. And they're mm. all different colors, just highly visible here, uh, each with a specific purpose. Yeah, going back it, to what I said yeah. to the the first one we featured, people like seeing all of this stuff like in action yeah. or like laid out in a, in a in a pocket dump right because there's just like there's so much stuff to see there like every every inch of it could be interesting <laughs> see this guy's collected a lot of edc stuff clearly jeff True. is on a mission to yeah. kid himself out i when i see this i think like there is a lot of intention behind this the, is that like, a lighter uh that's a lighter I, case yeah isn't so it? there there are two lighters here i'm assuming there's like a bic and a zippo um and yeah, the, like every th this person is uh, Jeff is showing how every pocket, every compartment in this bag is um, well utilized, and it's just very well thought out. So that's what I appreciate the most out of this aesthetically and functionally. This is probably not my style; it's a little maximalist for me. Uh, mm. But I can appreciate that somebody has put in the hours uh, dedicated to finding the stuff that works, going through a bunch of bags, and then putting all this modular gear together into one setup designed for his needs. That is sick, I think. I want to also point out that not a lot, like most of the stuff that's in and around this bag is also not very expensive. So oh, he, good point. In, instead of like spending a lot on like super premium things, He's really clearly experimented and wanting to try a lot of stuff and choosing the more affordable stuff. Like there's a no light there. There's the more affordable uh, Gerber tools. There's a smaller Leatherman there. Uh, I think this is a Kaiser or Concept Knife on the bottom. Yeah, mm. not a lot of them yeah, are very like expensive. And stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, and it allows him to express himself. It allows him to try out different things, try out different functionalities. Yeah, really, really like that. And uh, for people that might be watching this and and seeing like all these pouches and like why why have all these pouches um one benefit to the pouches is that they are modular meaning you just can take them off or not carry them if you don't need them and then they help organize groups of gear by function right so i'm assuming this is kind of like okay maybe this is not first aid um but i think this red thing might be first aid mm. and there's just you know sort of dedicated subsystems of gear organized mm -hmm. and consolidated in pouches and i think that's an interesting way to approach uh packing your edc if that's like a new concept to you i also like he's using those night eyes disconnect ones i think those are night eyes those are this, quick yeah, this disconnect. Is night eyes. yeah 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 the quick disconnect carboners that's letting him be even more modular on top of everything right, else right so yeah, yeah pretty smart so thank you jeff. jeff yeah um what else have we got here um Next, we got a post from Alan, and it's kind of similar to the last one, but it's an even smaller setup. This is like a... A, a micro version cluster? of... Yeah. Same idea as Jeff in a much more micro... <laughs> yeah, micro... it's like a belt holster, but every side of it has some gear attached to it. So... Ah, it's our favorite. Oh, here, okay. So here it's laid out. So... What are we doing here? We got some Knipex micro pliers, a Milwaukee mm. fastback knife. Th this is actually like a really popular um, sort of budget knife that's widely accessible. Mm. The fastback series. Um, you've probably seen them just at your local hardware store. Um, and we got a full size butterfly style multi tool. Um, another, then we got a lead lenser flashlight, lead lenser. Uh, Leatherman bit kit, and extender. 
So this is a really like multi-tool kind of focused, I would say. And it's nice that it's all all of these kind of bulky-ish tools can all populate that pouch and still be like very accessible on your belt and still have an entire really robust toolkit in the palm of your hand, literally in the palm of his hand. He's, yeah, he, there's like a photo of him just gripping it uh, as this like, you know, consolidated brick. <laughs> I I say brick like lovingly, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's jam-packed with functionality here. So this is... But that's like cool. super efficient use of space too. Gotta, I, I really appreciate that. Even like how he used the wrench on the left side, right beside the flashlight, just oh, to yeah. squeeze into that perfect space for it. I yeah. really, really like that. Really cool use of space. Really efficient use of space. And so one thing that I think of about like pouches and, and maybe this holster and the way that the tools are mounted on the outside is I think that minimizes scratches, but something tells me that Alan does not worry about scratches no. on his gear. Um, so shout Not out tools to like Alan. that. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got here? I think this is our last uh, duo of submissions. These are from Discord. So we have a Discord server, and we have a channel called like Share Your EDC. Even get some regulars in there who are just uh, happy to show off what they've got. Um, so here is one. This is from David R. I believe. Mm, David R. Another person with exceptionally nice stuff yeah so this like is really handle. really good stuff you're gonna have to help me uh oh why there's a foot in here looks like oh we're on theme yeah so <laughs> you're gonna have to help me out here so there's the leatherman arc which we both have you know just latest and greatest from leatherman's got the magna cut uh blade and the magnetic free architecture so this one uh caused you know quite a <laughs> quite some hype earlier that's the Okluma DC zero, which is their fourteen five hundred or AA sized uh, custom flashlight. It's one of the super premium ones that are kind of like ultra top tier. It's on the level of something like a Mag well, some would say some would argue that it's like above the Magizmo tier. It's basically the most premium, one of the most premium flashlights you can get. That's its full titanium hand machine in the USA, very limited supply. So really nice size also so okay interesting so i i would not have expected this to be such a flex so far we're two items in it's quite a flex what do we got uh next with the knife this is a bailout a bench made tagged out it might be the bailout yeah you're right i forget but yes uh sorry because i have like bench made fatigue of like all of <laughs> them kind of looking the same that's the grimsmo grimsmo oh my goodness i forgot the name well, Let's I think we out. did pretty good for most of these submitters not telling us what they are. <laughs> um, Grimsmo, Grimsmo Saga. There we go. That's the name of the pet. Grimsmo Saga. And that's a, yeah. And it's a special one because the pressure, the knock on the top is not actually a knock. I believe it's a pressure, special pressure um, pneumatic sort of uh, activator for the pen. So I know it's pretty special. That that thing on the top, yeah. the the knock is it's a one of a kind for Grimsmo. Another made in the USA, super small niche, artisanal, handcrafted, free range machine pen. Yeah. yeah. So would you say like um out of the the submissions we've seen so far, this one has probably the most like enthusiast Dollars level. Put into it. Well, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't gonna go there, but I mean like like yes. enthusiast level in terms of like custom or like latest and greatest because th this is kind of what i see yeah it's yeah. it's not only is it premium level it's also if you know it's also a, if you know you know because both the dc zero and the saga aren't easy to get either they're also on a drop system and they're also mm. limited and they're also quite expensive so those in the in themselves are already flex it's just the fact that you own one of them so nice yeah. well thank you for the glimpse into that world of edc david r so thanks for yeah submitting that and then we got this one from toxic spam i don't know why hmm. in my head i was thinking spicy pumpkin but i think that's just <laughs> from that other guy's jack-o-lantern uh wallet but yeah this is from toxic spam yeah he's got a lot of good stuff as well he i believe he collects if i'm not mistaken he collects a lot of well we lovingly call them pocket trash but he collects a lot of those 
little fidget toys, the patches and stuff. I believe that's toxic spam. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, toxic spam. If if that yeah. wasn't you, I know one of you guys were. Because I we was going to say, yeah. in this carry that we're looking at right now, there is mm. no pocket trash. Uh, mm. So there are no like fidget spinners or little like cubes or clickers or you know whatever those kinds of things might be. This looks pretty mm. functional to me, honestly. So we got yeah. a, uh, a a smartphone a flip phone that's like attached in a case with a keychain attachment. So that's like really. I was cool. actually wondering what that was. I wasn't sure if it was a cell phone or some other device. No, so I'm it's pretty a sure this phone, is right? a flip phone. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, which cool. is kind of sick. I'm I'm into that kind of tech. Then we got mm. this uh, a, a pouch mini in the pouch. middle, kind of like a mini pouch. I assume you can mm. use this as a wallet, or next to it, you could also use this as a wallet. <laughs> I believe that's the be... one of the alpaca. Yeah, one of the alpaca zip wallets and X pack. Yeah, yeah. And that in there, you've got a. Uh, is this a ballast song? I believe it is. Yes. Okay, so there's a butterfly <laughs> knife in one of the slots, but we can't really tell for sure. And then we got a couple yeah. of pens. So like this is. Looks like Clearly a space a band. Fisher space band, yeah. Then they got their keychain. It's a key bar set Key up bar, yeah. And matching green colorway uh, with a, you know, kind of s beaner type situation. We got a lot of... We, we unintentionally went on a green and black theme today, didn't we? Like, that was that completely unintentional. That just happened. The theme happened <laughs> to us. Yeah, we didn't curate this, like, for any visual aesthetic. Um, I guess yeah. that just seems to be what people are... What's resonating with people. These days, mm -hmm. maybe like these kind of olive green tones. is olive green is pretty popular. That's lately, a, it's I've a noticed. classic, yeah. Like yeah. olive green um, and like leather and brass. Like those are, I think those yeah. three colors kind of work well together. Um, then we got some more pens here. I think this is a Kubaton. I don't think you can write with this. No, I think that's. I think that's a what's it's called a rocket pen, isn't it? With that taper towards the end, isn't that a rocket pen? Oh, I, I'm not that cut up on pens, uh, to be honest. I just remember, it, it reminds, I don't know why rocket pen is coming to mind, but it, that shape of it specifically towards the end where it tapers. And the rare oh. appearance of, is this a Benchmade Hidden Canyon? It's a big <laughs> ass Benchmade fixed blade with like a, yeah, like gorgeous handle though. Um, yeah. There's no sheath pictured here. So I'm assuming. <laughs> He's just rod dogging it in his yeah, pocket. Yeah, <laughs> just like holds it in his hand, runs around just... it because you run faster with a knife. So that's the, that's the Discord submission. So if you guys want to be featured in these kind of community highlights, um, we're going to put a link to the description below and also all of our social channels where you can submit there. Ideally, if you wanted to be specifically in the podcast, you would uh, go through the submission forum um, that we've set up for the Carry the Weight podcast. Um, but yeah. yeah, like I said, EDC was built on the community that submitted this stuff to us. So we would love to see more of it from our, our new friends and listeners of the show. And also, if, you, if you're not just all about that sharing thing if you also want to ask for help or ask for suggestions that this would be a great like avenue to ask us and we can also post a question to the community like if you make a submission what could what more could we add to it if we have any yeah. suggestions for improvements yeah we're very we'd love to do check yeah. out stuff like that also thank yeah. you for bringing that up because i do want to to sort of normalize that it's okay to not have a perfect carry for you to share like everyone's going to be on their edc journey and Obviously, mm. a lot of the carries that we saw here today were really well done already and well thought out, but those are probably not beginners. If you feel like you're in a beginner camp and you kind of just want some help and where to go, um, you can send an unfinished carry in your eyes and you know ask a question along with it, ask for a recommendation or like let us know where you're going with it. And um, we would love to help you, you know, flush that out a little bit. Because uh, I, I realize that like there is some some pressure in social media. It's like, well, why post if it's not done or if it's like you know not good, you know. Mm. But oh, and to counter that, we we had a huge balance. So we had a couple of guys with super high end stuff, but the ones we posted we showed earlier have very affordable stuff. So you know, we we love a balance of both of them. So yeah. Now speaking of asking questions, we're gonna answer a few questions, uh, just a couple. Mm. Um, just to, because we didn't, we don't get to answer all of them every show. So, starting with the first question from Joshua Ritter, aka Aim for Life on TikTok. If you had to build a completely new EDC, 
without using anything that is currently in your EDC, what would you use? Ooh, I have been thinking about this <laughs> for at least 24 hours now. Why don't you go first? I'm interested in what you would, would come up with. Honestly, I've not thought about this at all. Um, I've not thought about this at all. In, in the 15 seconds it took me to read that, I started thinking of some things. Mm -hmm. I think it would be sick if... Uh, so I'm, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to pick stuff that I like actually cannot carry currently, meaning it's either I illegal or, uh, or like it, it just doesn't fit the needs of my, my responsibilities in life. Um, mm -hmm. But I would love to try a truly dumb phone, like a truly dumb phone. So mm -hmm. not, not a smartphone. Maybe it's an e-ink display, uh, no social media on it. Um, mm -hmm. And I get to just be more raw dog in the real world <laughs> without dopamine. Actually calling people? Oh, my, you savage. Yeah. So that's one thing <laughs> I would do, which I can't do because, you know, obviously I make content on social media. I kind of need to be up to date on that. Um, but mm. I think it would be a very interesting kind of throwback experience to, because I I'm at the age where I remember life before smartphones, not like mm. an iPad baby, but sometimes I act like it. Um, so <laughs> that's one thing. And the other thing is like I would love to just legally walk around <laughs> with like my Benchmade 42C, like just mm. like a ballast song, um, and just kind of like I'm freakishly good at flipping it. Like I wish that were that, that were the case. <laughs> that would just be interesting to me. I think. We would be, you'd be recognized by the Squid Industries crew and be like, hey, Bernard, and just like bust it out yeah, and flip yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those are two things that I think uh, would be really cool. I know they're not practical answers. Um, mm. And it's it doesn't make sense to, to be the dude with like the, you know, the dumb phone and the ballast song, the butterfly knife at the same time. Mm. But that's what came to mind. Great question. I that is such a really question. yeah. That that threw me for a loop of what yeah. I would what I would carry. Um, the the thing that stand out that stands out to me when I thought about this question is, I kind of want to carry a small fixed blade. It's one of those things where it's, it's something I've completely never tried to do. I've never owned a small fixed blade mm. or or carried one. I've always always been folders or something else or like the Bella songs. So a small fixie, I think might be interesting experience if, it, if it's something small enough that I can clip it into my pocket, like I would a folder. Um, I have had a bunch of them already. Like take, I've seen a bunch that I've liked that would like to own over the past year. So yeah, fixed blade in that regard. And man, um, I also kind of want to try out keychains again. I, I I started thinking about your more robust keychain setup and like yeah the one <laughs> that I just decided to completely undo <laughs> yeah I think because I've try yeah I've I want to look into more keychain flashlights or, or keychain tools maybe look into pry bars I've never carried pry bars either and just kind of like have a little neat titanium setup all in a keychain and that's something I've never tried either so those two mm. things I think I would do from scratch yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I found interesting in our answers is that mm. we kind of pick things that we would like to try that we were never able to try and not like extremely aspirational grail level things that <laughs> we can't obtain when that was yeah, kind of yeah. like a possibility yeah. of that question. So, yeah, yeah. Um, good for us for uh, being <laughs> representing the people. And, <laughs> yeah, and well adjusted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, question two. This is from me with knives again. Uh, thank you for all the insightful questions. So this one's about flashlights. Flashlights, mm -hmm. flood or spotlight? And this is this is um, for people that don't know what those terms are. It's about the beam profile. Like, is the the beam really wide and covers a wide area? So that's flood or spotlight, meaning like it reaches very far in a concentrated point. I can go first on this one. For general use, it's really hard to argue against flood. Because it's it's in an urban environment, you kind of want to see as much in front of you, and you wouldn't. There are very specific reasons for why you would want like a very focused beam targeting in something in front of you. That that's probably the hint of what it would, you would use it for targeting something in front of you. Right. So a general floody beam is more usable. It's lighter on the eyes. There's no like very bright hot spot that can sear your eyeballs if it's bright enough. So. Or you can do both. There's a bunch of flashlights that can actually do both spot and flood or try one of the nicer zoomies. Like, I know they get a bad rap, but 
there is a there is some functionality there that could be useful. Yeah. Zoomy where meaning you can turn it's like this, a yeah. like a focusable. Exactly, a focusable okay, view. Okay. Yeah, like okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so one of my bigger flashlights is a Nightcore one that has both a series of LEDs and also a LEP in the middle, so I get the best of both worlds. But it is mm. kind of bulky, so I don't really carry it unless it's in my go bug out bag and stuff like that. So yeah, I would say flood, but if not, I can I can go for both. Yeah, I I would just generally pick flood as well because a lot of the things that I would do is just like up close things like. Damn, I lost my CJRB pyrite. Maybe it's at the bottom <laughs> of, you know, under my couch or like under my seat in the car. Uh, so I don't need a spotlight for that. But I think the simple answer is like for practical use, flood. For funsies, spotlight. Mm, I'm like throwing sure. that that beam into the sky and just like waving that around. Just like damn. Everybody I wants. Yeah, everyone wants everybody to wants to play Star Wars and have a yeah. lightsaber. I mean, admit it, it looks really cool. It does look really, really cool if you have one of those super either a lep or one of those super flood, super throwy flashlights with a super high intense beam. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you for those questions. Um, just a couple of comments that we got in our comment sections on you know our Instagram and our TikTok that sort of thing. One is related. So we we claimed on the podcast before that you only need 100 lumens for most people. <laughs> and then we got this one comment that had 24 likes. So it was pretty pretty agreed with, I would say. Um, they said 1,000 minimum at all times. 3,500 lumens if I can. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think I only use 70 lumens on the regular, to be honest. A thousand is a lot. A thousand I, is a lot. Yeah, so when I see a comment like that, it makes me feel like, damn my life is boring i am not blasting <laughs> i don't there's nothing that needs 3500 lumens in my life so i think that's just an us issue i think we're just not yeah. pushing our gear enough are not living in a large enough piece of property where you need 35 3500 lumens to yeah. see everything around you yeah so you know i i regardless i think a lot of people can get by with 100 but if you need a thousand if you're looking for 3500 that's valid too man so for these last few comments we did a video on the ultim pyrite mini and honestly i thought not my cup of tea the way it looks uh but we got some people who were defending ultim saying that Ultim also has great anti-slip properties. They use it for guitar picks, and it also has its own sonic properties. Awesome material. And someone else said they like Ultim because of all the cool things it's made of, um, aerospace wiring, guitar picks, medical equipment, and military uses. And then um, someone else said that this was very popular on vape gear. And then now they're excited mm -hmm. to see that it's on EDC stuff. So I did yeah. not know about a lot of those other applications of Ultim. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I first actually learned about it because I have a couple of friends who who did the whole vaping thing. And they're like, finally, you guys are catching on to how cool Ultim is because for vapes, mm -hmm. they're really useful since it's very anti, the thermal properties are really good. And yeah. since vape uh, generates a lot of heat, you can have something that's really lightweight, a very eye-catching color, and still able to withstand the temperatures that vapes, like the higher-powered vapes, would generate. So it's pretty popular with them, and they liked seeing it cross over to the EDC space, and they were, they yeah. were the ones telling See, me it, about it. Yeah. I, I just still feel like it's a stretch for like knife <laughs> handles, because you don't need sonic properties, you don't need like any electrical wiring, and you don't need... like heat resistance at like vape levels you know what i mean but wouldn't you argue that it's a better plastic like you know remember all that hoopla with the sure, quivery sure. of the old benchmade stuff if you can that have something true, that's actually eye-catching that you can market as a cool material and also have really cool properties and still be rigid enough to for hard use and it won't bend like everybody was true. complaining about the, the rigidity, original bugger. you're yeah. right okay i kind of forgot about that um, cause yeah, the, yeah. the night, you know what, maybe I just need to buy a bunch more Ultim knives because <laughs> I got on the mini pyrite and like, it's so small that like, I'm not gripping it hard enough to flex it. So I didn't even notice mm -hmm. that, but yeah, always something new to learn. So I appreciate the community. Like the, it's always the real pro tips are in the comments. So thank you for commenting there. If you made it this far, thank you so much for listening. 
I hope you enjoyed today's show and tell kind of discussion. And if you did, please subscribe. If you're listening through a podcast service and you really enjoy what we do here, please consider leaving a review and a positive rating as it would really help the show. You can follow us on social me social media for more daily content on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. All of that will be linked below. And if you want to be part of our EDC community to be highlighted in episodes like this every month, feel free to hop into our Facebook group or Discord server for more real-time discussion with other EDCers. Lastly, if you have any feedback for us or questions you want answered on the show, you can shoot us an email at podcast at everydaycarry.com. So thank you for listening to Carry the Way. I'm Bernard. And I'm Mikey. And let us know what you think of this kind of episode. If you liked it, if you have any feedback about it, let us know. We'd love to hear from you somewhere. Well said. Peace.